morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Bansi, for giving me an opportunity. I'm going to discuss a very important topic. Actually, he, uh, it's whole of lipids we, I'm going to talk about in a in span of 25 minutes. So uh, we all know that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, n n nothing to be, uh, you know, special thing I have to tell about diabetes because all of you are endocrinologists, basically. We have is basically, we have an epidemic of uh, diabetes in our country. My part comes because majority of patients of diabetes, they die of cardiovascular disease. The, and and uh, majority of our diabetic patients are very poorly managed as far as dyslipidemia is concerned. Why dyslipidemia? Because uh, inter-heart study shows that uh, the population attributable risk of dyslipidemia to acute myocardial infarction is highest. It's around 50%. So it's a major contributor to acute myocardial infarction uh, uh, universal. And nine out of 10 patients of diabetes, they suffer from dyslipidemia, you know, and that is a special dyslipidemia because the triglyceride is high, HDL is low, LDL cholesterol is either normal or mildly raised. So you, everybody feels very happy that my LDL cholesterol is very good, so nothing to worry about it. But they don't know that there is increased levels of small dense LDL particle, which is more atherogenic and which is a, a problem creator. Now, how, you know, I'll just give you an animation that uh, how it, you know, you get diabetic dyslipidemia, means tried off, high triglyceride, uh, low HDL, and the small dense LDL particle. So we all know that uh, diabetes basically is an insulin resistance. Whenever there is an insulin resistance, there is increase in VLDL um, uh, particles. And uh, uh, another important feature of insulin resistance is that uh, there is uh, inhibition of lipoprotein lipase because there is higher APOC3 level. And when there is a inhibition of lipoprotein lipase, the VLDL stays for much longer time in the circulation. Normally it stays for a few hours. It stay in the circulation becomes much longer. At that time, simultaneously, because of uh, insulin resistance, CATP cholesterol ester transfer protein get activated. What it does is that it transfer cholesterol ester cholesterol from LDL and HDL to VLDL. Means cholesterol goes from LDL or HDL to VLDL in exchange of triglyceride which comes from VLDL to LDL and HDL. What happens exactly that the LDL particle contains now more triglyceride, comparatively less cholesterol, and so is the HDL particle. So this is the story which, you know, is initiated. And uh, whatever extra LDL cholesterol, triglyceride LDL cholesterol particle gets from VLDL is removed by the hepatic lipase. So overall what happens, eventually we get a LDL particle which is smaller in size because it has lost cholesterol ester also, it has lost uh, um, uh, triglyceride also, so this particle becomes small. So this is what how the dense LDL particles are formed when the, whenever the triglycerides are higher. Similarly, excess triglyceride in HDL is also lost by, by hepatic lipase and this HDL also becomes, you know, get excreted in the urine, so you get low HDL cholesterol in uh, in patients with insulin resistance. This is the mechanism how high VLDL is translated into uh, small dense, increase in small dense LDL particle and uh, low HDL cholesterol. We published our ex consensus statement on management of diabetic dyslipidemia about two years back and you'll be very happy to know that it was one of the most popular JCL article in social media. This is from the National Lipid Association website. Now, to understand good, bad, and uh, ugly, uh, uh, you know, lipoprotein, uh, you should, I'll just talk about some basic so that it will be much easier for you to understand. There are six prominent main lipoprotein in circulation. S five of them carries ApoB, which we call as ApoB, containing lipoprotein particles, which are said to be atherogenic particle. And each atherogenic part ApoB particle contains only one ApoB. So number of ApoB in circulation can tell you that how many atherogenic particles are in circulation. The other particle is HDL, which we always all know that it is uh, ApoA containing particle and it is, you know, responsible for reducing atherogenesis. Now, the cholesterol content of all these particles taken together is total cholesterol which you measure. If I remove or subtract the HDL cholesterol from the total cholesterol, what I get is non-HDL cholesterol. So what is non-HDL cholesterol is total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol. And if I remove or subtract the cholesterol content of LDL and uh, lipoprotein A particle, what I get is the remnant cholesterol. 
So remnant cholesterol is total cholesterol minus HDL cholesterol and L LDL cholesterol. So non-HDL cholesterol minus LDL cholesterol is a remnant cholesterol. So what is good, bad, and ugly lipids? Bad, no doubt everybody knows, is LDL cholesterol. Uh, ugly is triglyceride rich lipoprotein or remnant cholesterol. And good, of course, is uh, HDL cholesterol. Now, what are the role played by these in diabetic dyslipidemia? There is no doubt that LDL cholesterol is culprit for ASCVD. The strong, strong evidence in favor of it. Uh, pr if you look into the family's, uh, you know, natural history of homozygous FH, where the child is born with LDL cholesterol of 300 milligram or more, or 500, and most of them, they die by 20 years of age because they develop con severe coronary artery disease at a much younger age. The LDL cholesterol target has been changing since 1988 when ATP1 guidelines was published. It initially, it was less than 130 milligram. Then gradually, it came down to less than 100. And in 2004, uh, it was uh, the optional goal of less than 70 milligram was recommended for high-risk patients of coronary artery disease. Remember, it is not a number which is important. It is how much LDL cholesterol you reduce is important. And how long you reduce it is important. For example, I reduced LDL cholesterol by 40 milligram for five years. I reduce event by 21%. If I reduce 40 milligram for 12 years, I reduce event by 32%. If I reduce 40 milligram of LDL cholesterol because of a genetic mutation for 52 years, the event reduction is 53%. So it's a duration which is equally important for us. And, uh, uh, and this event reduction is irrespective of what is your baseline LDL cholesterol value, whether uh, uh, what is the sex, what is the uh, uh, you know, whether the patient is diabetic or non-diabetic, or a patient has a peripheral artery disease or no peripheral artery disease. It is irrespective of that. Similarly, if you reduce LDL cholesterol by 20 milligram, you reduce even by 16%. You reduce LDL cholesterol by 10 milligram because of genetic mutation, you reduce even by 17%. If you reduce 5 milligram, you reduce even by about 7 to 8%. So each milligram of LDL cholesterol reduction is extremely important. Why it is extremely important for our country? Because we have in India, if you look into the facts of coronary artery disease, we have high prevalence of coronary artery disease. We have a high prevalence of e premature coronary artery disease. You will be surprised that 25% of patients who presents with myocardial infarction, they are less than 40 years of age. And this memorial, uh, the, this uh, you know, oration is for a doctor who died of sudden cardiac death in a young age. So that is one of the reasons is we, we have to be very careful and we have to be very aggressive because our atherosclerosis is very aggressive. It progresses much faster. So, and third, of course, is that uh, uh, it is associated with higher mortality. If somebody has, you know, if you uh, look into Indian statistics, 50% of patients who die of coronary artery disease are less than 50 years of age. In contrast, European, 90% of death due to coronary artery disease is more than 65 years of age. So imagine that uh, the you know amount of a uh, tsunami we have in our country about coronary artery disease. Therefore, since diabetes is one of the biggest culprit for progression of atherosclerosis, it has to be treated very aggressively. The first trial of uh, you know statin versus placebo in diabetes was long back in 2004. It was such a wonderful result that it was you know stopped prematurely because there was significant reduction in cardiovascular event. And after that, there was no trial of statin versus placebo or high intensity statin versus moderate intensity statin. So whatever data we have about diabetes is based upon uh, post hoc analysis or subgroup analysis of ASC secondary prevention trial or primary prevention trial. We do not have a separate trial for diabetes where we can say that patient with diabetes versus no diabetes. So uh, we'll discuss more about it now. We, in 2016, were the, uh, came out with our first expert consensus statement, and we classified patients of diabetes with no or one ASCVD risk factor or no target organ damage as high risk group, and we recommended LDL cholesterol goal of less than 70 milligram in this group of patients. And those patients of diabetes with target organ damage or two or more ASCVD risk factor was classified as a very high risk group uh, with a target of LDL cholesterol of less than 50 milligram. We were again one of the, the first association in the world at that time to recommend LDL cholesterol less than 50 milligram. And this was based upon strong scientific evidence. You know, this is some scientific data which we took into consideration. And most important trial was the Improve IT trial, 
This was basically a post-ACL trial where about 27% of patients had underlying diabetes also. And here it was found that when LDL cholesterol was reduced from 69 to around 53 milligram, there was 6% reduction in cardiovascular event. And uh, now the real story starts because if the diabetes is separate, there is no much problem. When it has an association with some other diseases, it becomes a very, very you know, serious issue. Uh, I can say that uh, diabetes, be like uh, India is a diabetes, you know, diabetes when I talk, I talk about India. And when I say something else, coronary artery disease, I talk about Pakistan. For a, for, to uh, make it understand, otherwise no other feelings, you know, you, it will be much easier for you to understand. Now, these are the statin trials, you know, in which, uh, you know, there were, uh, like in uh, CARE trial and TNT trial, 15% of patients had diabetes. So there were two groups of patients in this trial, uh, one without diabetes, another with a diabetes and coronary artery disease. So coronary artery disease without diabetes and coronary artery disease with diabetes. Now, in CARE trial, where the mean LDL cholesterol achieved was 98, and TNT trial, where the mean LDL cholesterol was 77, you can see about 19.4% patient had events at five years in care trial and 7.8% in TNT trial. In those patients who did not have diabetes. In diabetic patient with the same level of achieved LDL cholesterol, events were 28.7 in contrast to 19.4 and 13.8 in contrast to 7.4. Means mere presence of diabetes, everything is same. The events went up significantly higher. Surprisingly, uh, the events in these statin treated patients in diabetes was much more than those patients of coronary artery disease in which statin was not given. You can see 24.6 versus 28.7 and 9.7 percent. What does it mean? It means that when there is an associated coronary artery disease in diabetes, there is a significant increase in cardiovascular event. So please don't take the relation of coronary artery disease and diabetes uh, very in a very, very lighter mode, don't consider Pakistan and Indian relations to be so good. You have to be very serious about this because lose, you will lose patients if you to treat the patients of coronary artery disease and coronary artery disease and diabetes in the same way. But surprisingly, those patients of diabetes who uh, whatever level of LDL cholesterol achieved, they have more Events are prevented, the more events are prevented in patients of CAD and diabetes as compared to patients who have no diabetes. Means there is a greater benefit in event reduction with LDL cholesterol lowering in patients. That shows diabetes adds to the risk of the patient. As you all know, higher the risk of the patient, even the relative risk reduction may be same, but the absolute risk reduction will be much higher. As you can see here, absolute risk reduction in diabetic patient was 7.9 versus 5.2 with no diabetes, 4.1 versus 2.1. So we have seen the difference uh, in 98 LDL cholesterol and 77. And same finding was found in improved IT trial where the mean LDL cholesterol achieved was 53, that at 53, the events were higher uh, in patients with diabetes as compared to those patients of coronary artery disease without diabetes. You know, the event is higher, significantly higher. But benefit was significantly more in event reduction in diabetic patient as compared to patients who did not have diabetes with absolute risk reduction of 5.5 versus 0.7. What does it mean? That uh, the association of diabetes with coronary artery disease gives rise to more events but greater benefits. But when the events are more, we have to bring down the event. So therefore, one thing is very clear that patients of coronary artery disease and coronary artery disease plus diabetes cannot be placed in one group. It has to be a separate group because the events are significantly different in these two, both the groups. You know. Now, the story doesn't end here. Now, China comes into picture. Now, we have Pakistan and China along with that. Now, it, this is a study from South Korea where intervention was done in patients who presented with acute myocardial infarction. And in 12 months outcome, if you look into this, there are 5.5% patient with coronary artery disease had events, only 5.5, which went up to 15.6 uh, when there was a diabetes, and it went up to 18.7 when there was associated hypertension. I'll give you another example of a IT trial. A person with diabetes, coronary artery disease without diabetes, they had 30% event in seven years in improved IT trial. When there was diabetes, the event went up to 40%. And when there was peripheral artery disease, it went up to 56%.
So this means adding more comorbidities to coronary artery disease and diabetes add further uh, increase in the cardiovascular event. Another example, reason why reason is this, that there is a very important trial, which is a TRP secondary prevention TME50 trial, where it was seen that the patients with coronary artery disease, when none of these nine risk indicators was present, which is shown in blue, heart failure, hypertension, age more than 75, when none of these indicators was present in patients with coronary artery disease, only 3.5% of these patients had recurrent cardiovascular event in three years' time. Only 3.5% in three years' time. When their number was added from one, two, three, four, and to more than seven, at more than seven, 58.6% patient had an events. Imagine from 35 to 56%. What does it mean? That coronary artery disease as such is not an homogeneous group. You know, it has to be heterogeneous group, and especially with the diabetes, uh, the uh, you know, condition worsens, which of course is very obvious from this particular slide. This is, this is an improved IT study. Here, as I said, 27% of patients of uh, improved IT trial were diabetic. So group A is patients of CAD with diabetes, and group B are those patients of CAD without diabetes, you know, therefore. When the risk indicators were applied, nine risk indicator which I discussed below before, the patient was classified as low risk group when there is no or one risk indicator, two when uh, intermediate when two were there, and more than three it was high risk group. In both the groups, you know, you can see. Now, in those patients of without diabetes, you can see that in low risk group and intermediate risk group, there was not much difference in, uh, you know, uh, CV events in LDL cholesterol of 69 uh, and 53. Means absence of diabetes in a patient with coronary artery disease, even if there is one or two risk indicator, doesn't lead to much difference in uh, you know, change in the cardiovascular event. But if there is an associated diabetes, then those with one or two also makes a lot of difference. You can see 17.9 versus 11.7 uh, in zero to one group and 19.3 to 16.8 in the second group, intermediate group. So this means diabetic patients, they, if there are additional one or two uh, risk indicator leads to a further increase in cardiovascular event. And when three or more of them are present in both the group, the incidence of residual risk becomes much, much higher, significantly two to three times higher. Therefore, based upon this, we can now very clearly say that patients of CAD is one group, CAD and diabetes is second group, CAD plus diabetes with three or more risk indicators, third group. So there is a need for three groups. When I talk of coronary artery disease, you can equate this as patients of diabetes with target organ damage because the risk of diabetes and with target organ damage and coronary artery disease is practically the same, you know. So that is all. So what we did in 2023, we solved this problem and we created one new risk group, which was an extreme risk group. And this risk group was further categorized into those patients of ASCVD who had uh, one or more features of high risk group as category A, and those patients of uh, ASCVD who had one or more features of uh, very high risk group as category B. We were the, again, only country or only association in the world to have category A and category B, and we uh, then we can stratify this based upon, you know, 10 year risk. If somebody has a 10 year risk of 20 to 29%, it falls into very high risk group. If it is between 30 to 39 percent, it is uh, uh, category A, and if it is more than 40 percent, it's category B. And we recommended LDL cholesterol goal of less than 50 for category A with the option of less than 30. For category B, we recommended goal of LDL less than 30 milligram. We were, again, the first association in 2020 to recommend such an ultra-low level of LDL cholesterol of 30 milligram. Again, this was based upon strong scientific evidence, and the trial which we took into consideration was a four-year trial. And there was a lot of post of analysis, and I'm not going to go into detail of it. One year after recommendation, National Lipid Association also, for their South Asian population living in United States, also created an extreme risk group. And in diabetic patients, they also proposed LDL cholesterol less than 30 milligram. It was just after one year of our recommendations. Now, how to treat patients of diabetes? You know, 
classify patients whether the patient has underlying ASCVD or no ASCVD. If a diabetic patient have no target organ damage or one or no ASCVD factor is classified as a high risk group with LDL cholesterol to target of less than 70 milligram. If that patient has ASCVD, then that is classified as category A of extreme risk group with an optional uh, of goal of less than 30 milligram. If diabetic patients have target organ damage with two or more ASCVD risk factor, he falls into very high risk group with LDL cholesterol target of less than 50 milligram. And the patient, if he has a diabetes, has ASCVD, then he falls into category B with the LDL cholesterol target of less than 30 milligram. This means patients of diabetes without ASCVD will either be high risk group or very high risk group, and target of patients of diabetes with ASCVD will be in category A or category B. Now, the story doesn't end here because 14.4% of patients of diabetes, despite uh, achieved LDL cholesterol of 30 milligram in four-year trial, had cardiovascular event. So we have to look beyond LDL cholesterol. And the other drug, which, which with the lipoprotein, which comes in the mind of all of us is triglyceride. Is that, uh, what about the triglyceride? It was seen in pro IT trial that even if the LDL cholesterol was achieved less than 70 milligram, those patients who have triglyceride more than 150 milligram have significantly higher event as compared to those in which the triglyceride was less than 150 milligram. But question comes, if we reduce triglyceride, does it translate into reduction in cardiovascular event? Answer was no, because the field trial and a court trial was a negative trial. But when the subgroup analysis were done, it was found that those with the triglyceride more than 204 and HDL of 34, they had about 35% reduction in cardiovascular event. And it's about 6% reduction in those who has the triglyceride less than 204 with HDL of 34. LAI recommends that triglyceride should be brought down to less than um, uh, 150, uh, but preferably less than 100. Remember one thing, that whenever triglyceride is ra raised, always rule out secondary cause of dyslipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia, extremely important. Whatever you may do, if there is a secondary cause, you will not be able to bring down triglyceride. And second, that lifestyle intervention plays a very important role in reduction of triglyceride. This is the algorithm, which I'm not going to discuss in detail. You can go, it's very nicely. We have told, shown that how you should manage uh, the triglyceride more than 500 and less than 500. Now, we are talking about triglyceride, triglyceride. Is, is really triglyceride a culprit? Answer is yes or no? The majority says no. Yes. This is true because this meta-analysis shows that if you increase triglyceride by 30, by 90 milligram, it increases even by 76% in women and 32% in men. It is non-adjusted. When it was adjusted, it from 176, it comes down to 137, and 132, it comes down to 1.14. When it was uh, adjusted for both HDL and non-HDL cholesterol, triglyceride loses its significance. Absolutely, you can see a straight line. So this means what is non-HDL cholesterol, because that is most important. Non-HDL cholesterol is the uh, you know, total circulating atherogenic cholesterol in the, in the circulation. At any level of LDL cholesterol, increase in HDL cholesterol is associated with high cardiovascular event. Rather, uh, this statin trial shows that if uh, with the reference of uh, uh, reference uh, is LDL of less than 100 and non-HDL of less than 130 milligram. This is the reference. So these are normal range. If that LDL is less than 100, but non-HDL is more than 130, there is 32% events. As compared to those patients where non-HDL is less than 130 and LDL is more than 100. So that shows that in statin-treated patient, it is a non-HDL cholesterol which, is, uh, which uh, tells you about the future cardiovascular event. Recommendation is it should be treated as strongly as possible. Remnant cholesterol, I have already discussed about what is the remnant cholesterol. And in TNT trial, it was found that if the remnant cholesterol is more than 39, there is a 48% increase in event as compared to those with the remnant cholesterol less than uh, 19 milligrams. So that shows the importance. And this is independent of LDL cholesterol. It adds to the risk of LDL cholesterol. ApoB, as I said, each atherogenic particle carries one ApoB. And inter-heart studies shows a strong positive linear relationship of ApoB to ApoA ratio with coronary artery disease. And therefore, we LAI has strongly recommended ApoB as, as a secondary target. If possible, it should be routinely done at age 20 if, it is, if, if a person is able to afford. 
The summary of ugly uh, lipids is extremely important for you to understand. Elevated triglyceride level adjusted for SDL, non-SDL cholesterol and APOB loses their significance. So if you have achieved non-SDL cholesterol level, if you have achieved APOB level, even if triglyceride is raised, please forget about it. Nothing is going to happen to the patient. That should be a clear message uh, to uh, all of you. And if you, somebody wants discussion, we can always discuss later on. And always try to achieve LDL cholesterol, non-SDL cholesterol, and APOB uh, target when you treat patients with dyslipidemia. HDL is controversial uh, because it is a complex molecule uh, because if uh, it, it consists of uh, uh, hundreds of uh, thousands of lipids, um, more, more than 70 uh, different proteins, uh, more than 10 subclasses, if any of the protein become dysfunctional, uh, this whole molecule becomes dysfunctional. And worst part of HDL is that when it becomes dysfunctional, it becomes erythrogenic. It loses, it, it behaves in absolutely reverse gear. It harms you. So that is the biggest problem with SDL. And no pharmacotherapy has shown that elevated, in, uh, if you increase SDL cholesterol, it is going to reduce the cardiovascular event. And uh, uh, this is the algorithm of our, our, uh, how you should treat patients of diabetes. Uh, it's very nicely given. You must treat this. And uh, uh, if once you read it, you will definitely like, and you will love to treat your patient accordingly. This is what all uh, I have discussed with some important message. One of the most important messages is that initiate statin on the day you diagnose diabetes. That is extremely important. Don't, please don't delay. Don't go for age of 40 as you just see in American Association of Clinical Endocrinology or American Diabetic Association. That is very important for us. Achieve all three targets, LDL cholesterol, non-SDL cholesterol, and APOB target when you treat your patients of diabetic dyslipidemia. Thank you very much for your kind attention.